Well, you have Fancy V, 1 1 draw, a uh, goal uh, that rescues a point for us by Joseph Martinez, won by Brooks Lennon. And uh, yeah, I mean, what maybe was a drab uh, 86 minutes. We go home a little happier against the league leaders. But uh, what did you think, Tanner? I mean, as far as the result goes, you, you can't complain about a draw away to Seattle. You know what I mean? They, they've been really, really good. They've won seven straight home games up until that point. Um, that's a solid result. How you got there was a little bit more of the problem. I don't think, you know, Atlanta looked particularly good. And to be honest, for a nationally televised game between two of the you know bigger clubs in the league, it was, it was a bit of a you know, damp squib. Um, good goal from Seattle to start things off, and then it just kind of settled into two teams kicking the shit out of each other. Well, mostly Seattle kicking the hell out of Atlanta, but still, it wasn't much by way of final product from any team, that's for sure. Right, and uh, so it's kind of been kind of exemplary of what's been happening throughout the season, but uh, you know, did you see progress today in terms of you know from match to match? I mean, I think that there are some, there is some progress there. I think that, you know, some players are really showing their growth. I think that George Bello is really coming along strong. He was one of the bright spots last season, and he's clearly one of the better players on this team now, for sure. I, I think that, you know, for me personally, Joseph, you know, he's still working to get back to where he was at, but his quality has been proven. Um, him, Sosa, Miles, and, and George Bello, I think, are on a different level from everybody else. Um mm. I think there's some solid foundations there. Abara has some good moments. You know, he showed some some good strength and won the ball in a few areas at times. I think Heinemann, he's serviceable. Um, you know, compared to what he's getting paid, I'd, I'd like to see more production from him. I think Brooks Lennon is okay, but, you know, he's not Julian Gressel, that's for sure. And considering what, you know, we're paying some people and everything, I, I kind of would have rather had Julian Gressel there still serving in some balls because – the service has really gone down for Joseph since you know players like Julian Gressel have left, and his crossing he managed to find Joseph a lot. And whether you say that was because you know Joseph was really good, you know now you're seeing that without Julian putting the balls in, Joseph isn't scoring them as much. Um, I think walks is is, is definitely solid, um, which is a bit concerning considering how much money Atlanta had spent on Franco, and mm -hmm. he's not even getting into the team. Um, I know he's had some injury issues as well, but mm -hmm. you know. I, Walks has looked solid, and I don't think that necessarily he's done anything to lose his position back there. And I think mm -hmm. one of the things you can look at with Atlanta United is they're not giving away a lot. I mean, mm -hmm. Seattle, strong team, but they they didn't really create much outside of that header. And, you know, Brooks Lennon could have done a better job marking Rui Diaz, but Rui Diaz is an incredible striker, and that was a very, very quality header. I mean, perfectly bullet redirected into the corner of the goal. I mean, you can't do much about those. Um but outside of that, they didn't really create much. So you, you can't be upset with the you know the midfield for the most part, and mm. with the defense, they're clearly doing their job. It's just going forward, it's still a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, you know, we get kind of a you know late-ish equalizer. Should we have gone for it and uh, maybe kept Joseph Martinez on? Were you surprised that he was taken off? Um, I was really surprised he was taken off personally. I mean, at that point, I, I don't know what another 10 minutes more of Joseph will do for his health. I think he looks solid. And I personally think that a tired Joseph is better than a fresh Kubo Torres. Um, you know, especially now with Lissandra Lopez leaving Atlanta, I'd really need to figure out something in that striker department because it's, if you're going from Joseph to Kubo, that's a massive drop off. I mean, you know, you want Kubo to be decent, obviously, and nothing personal against the guy, but he doesn't offer Atlanta United much of anything. Um, I guess his experience is why he plays over Jackson Conway, um, which is probably fair. He probably is a little bit better on the ball than Jackson Conway, but at the same time, if you're going for it and you want to put balls into the box and, you know, look for someone to get a body on something and be physical, I think Jackson Conway definitely can do that job for you. Um, but, you know... The penalty, you take it. It was absolutely a penalty. It was a bit lucky um, to get that. And if that's what you're relying on to create chances and score goals, then you know Atlanta's going to have a problem because on the whole they got some shots, but you know not really that many clear cut chances created. Um, good run from Brooks Lennon, fantastic ball from Miles Robinson, and he's adding that next you know layer and level to his game that we've been talking about in terms of his technical ability, his ball skills. He is dribbling out of the back a lot more. He's stepping into the final third at times and, mm -hmm. and carrying the ball. 
if he continues to do that, he's very quickly, A, going to be starting for the U.S. men's national team, I think, or at least in the conversation for it. Um, but B, more importantly, earning himself a move to Europe. Um, mm-hmm. And I think he'd absolutely deserve that. But aside from you know that and George Bellow and Joseph and Sosa, who clearly will move to Europe at some point in time, there's still a lot to be desired. I mean, if I'm not coming, I mean, look, Miranda scored the winner last week. Fantastic. But outside of that, he doesn't add anything to this team. And I'm really frustrated because you look at the wages and the, the, the outlay that's been put down on players like him, Eric Lopez, and Jurgen Dam. All three of those players were signed when Atlanta United didn't have a permanent manager. And I find it hard to believe that Gabriel Heinze would have sanctioned those moves. And I want Miranda to work. I want him to play better, and I want him to do better. I just, I'm going to be honest, like, I know he will get some more time, and he probably deserves it. I just don't see it with him. I don't see the technical ability from him. He has no left foot. I mean, to be fair, Miggy didn't have a right foot, so I can't be like, oh, you know, every player has to have two feet. But Miggy could look up and find a ball and pick a pass. Moreno can't. There was a moment in the first half where he had three different players he could have attempted to play a pass to, but he just kept his head down and shot the ball into two people who were standing directly in front of him at the top of the box. And... When I'm not complaining about him, I quite often forget that he's even playing in the game. And that's not good for someone wearing the number 10 shirt. I mean, for all of our complaints about P.T. Martinez, he did more than what Moreno's doing right now. And Joseph is having to drop back to the halfway line just to get the ball at times. And if Joseph is playmaking for you, there is no one else on this team that can score goals consistently. And he needs to be in and around the box. Joseph needs to be making the runs in behind defense like we know he can. Someone has to be able to play the ball to him. I think Ezekiel Barco is a decent player, but he hasn't shown the ability to be making those line-breaking passes either. And I think for me, you can see the foundation of what Gabriel Heinze wants to do. You can see that the players really enjoy playing for him and fighting for him and that they have a desire to win. But you have to give him the tools needed to build the rest of the house. You know what I mean? Mm. And Elliot doesn't have them right now. And I think you can see that they struggle to give those to Frank DeBoer as well. And obviously he wasn't a good fit, I don't think. And it's not an excuse, but... He wasn't the best tools to succeed, and I want that for Gabriel Heinze. I just don't know if he has the people in place above him to give him the right team that he needs to to really win here in Atlanta. And we'll are you the- saying Boca out? <laughs> saying that there are players in this team that are making more than the players that they replaced, and they're not as good as them. And I think that. This team has made questionable signings like Moreno, like Dam, like Eric Lopez, who is younger, yes, but he's looked out of his depth recently, and I'm someone who's wanted to see more of him, and now I have seen more of him, and I don't think he's ready yet, and he needs some more time. But Atlanta has spent upwards of, what, six, seven million on these players without having a manager, and I do not think Gabriel Heinze would have signed these players because they don't really fit into what he's trying to do. Um, and so, yeah, I would really very much like to see this front office make some moves mid-season and mm. mls is a that if you can make the right moves even if it's mid-season you can still win because of how the playoffs are you just have to gel i don't think atlanta united and i predicted it in the in the season thing because i was bold and i was filled with confidence because of heinze and i believed in these players but a lot of things have changed and i'm very happy with the result so i don't want to be like harping and super negative here but atlanta united is not winning the league with this roster it's not happening. There's not enough talent in key positions to get the ball to the key players you need to, to score goals. And I think a lot of Joseph's struggles have come with the fact that no one's getting him the ball in dangerous areas to score. Mm-hmm. No one's creating situations for Atlanta United to score. And the chances we do create, which aren't very many, aren't being taken because outside of Joseph, there's no real quality to take them. Mm-hmm. Um, so... You know, I think there is a solid foundation, and this team can be better, and this team can win, but it's still going to need to go some, take some time to get 100% confidence in, in the manager. I think that he deserves everyone's backing, and I know some people out there strangely would like to see him fail and are comparing him to DeBoer. I think it's completely different. I don't think DeBoer was ever a fit culturally. I don't think he was a fit tactically. I don't think his mindset fit. I think Gabriel Hines does. If Gabriel Heinze inherits the team from 2018, I think we're talking about a completely different story, right? Mm. We saw what Frank DeBoer took with the title-winning team with minimal changes, minus Miguel Almiron, and how they got worse. Mm. He needs more backing in his second year, I think, and 
the club made some moves that pulled the chair out from under him. But Gabriel Heinze is a fit. His mindset does fit. These players love playing for him. They are fighting for him. Mm-hmm. But there needs to be more quality there if Atlanta United wants to get to the level that they claim to be at as a club and the claim, you know, and the level that they aspire to stay at as a club. They're not there right now. And it will take time. I think they have the right manager to get there. But some of these players aren't good enough. And you can be happy about a point in Seattle. They didn't play well today. This game wasn't very good. You got to take, take the results sometimes. But this club does talk about performances. And Gabriel Heinz will want performances eventually. And I think he's doing his best to... to stay positive and keep that outward, you know, positivity going. But I think that privately he has to be looking at some of these players and going, this ain't it. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll leave you with this. All right. Since uh, he's been in the news, uh, there was a pregnancy as well. Tito Vichalba, would you have him back? I would take Tito Vichalba back in a heartbeat. I think he'd be perfect under Gabriel Heinze. I think he brings the energy. I mean, I don't know how you fit him back into this team. Um, I don't know financially, financially speaking. I think that you, if you bring Tito Vijaba back, he's walking into the starting eleven playing every single game like he should have been under Frank DeBoer. I think that he can score goals. He can carry the ball. He has the dynamism that you want to see on the wing. He can also play as a striker because God knows no one else can on this team. I would take Tito Vijaba back in a heartbeat. I don't know what it would take to do to sign him. Get rid of whoever you have to get rid of in terms of attacking players outside of Joseph to make it happen. I don't care if that means selling Moreno, selling Barco. doesn't matter. You need to get Tito back on this team. I don't know how you do it. You know he would come back in a heartbeat, as we saw this week. (laughs) Um, Get that man back. The 15 shirt's available now, again. So, like... (laughs) Whatever it takes, but he's a, he's a player that I think would fit perfectly. I mean, God knows his pressing, his energy, his pace, his speed, everything about him. If he's healthy and confident, which I think playing under Gabriel Heinze, he would be, he'd be perfect for this team. And just, Elena Adam needs to start swallowing some pride, and it needs to just realize it needs to just be making some moves. And, well, one person needs to swallow their pride and start making some moves, and if not, they need to just get the hell out of our club because they don't know what they're doing, and we know exactly what I'm talking about. Oh boy! All right, uh, is suddenly uh, my my pits are a little uh, a little steamy now, and uh, so I will leave you at that. Appreciate you, Tanner, and uh, we'll talk to you later.